Okay, new YouTube channel. Choose something uncontroversial. So it's pretty well known that the original Rogue Trader was a port of Warhammer Fantasy Battle in space. It has all the well-known tropes of elves, orcs, psychologically abused child soldier knights, noble warrior knights, and squats were the original attempt to do fantasy dwarves in space. Squats, or in fantasy cod Latin Homo sapiens rotundus, are first seen in the abhuman section of the 1987 Rogue Trader book, alongside the space halflings, space beastmen, and space ogres. Generations of life on high gravity worlds has caused changes in the physique of long established humanoid populations. They have a tendency to become short, but also very squat, bull necked, and muscular. Humans of this appearance are known as squats, but also as dwarves. And yeah, they really are. They're good with technical equipment. They're described as being taciturn and stubborn, and they really don't like orcs. Their profile lists them as being tougher, braver, and a bit better in melee than the average human, but also a bit slower, and that's about it for information. But though they have barely more words dedicated to them than Ogrins, it's clear from the rest of this book that they're intended to be a pretty significant part of the game. They have a small range of models pictured in the book and ready to go on release, and they pop up all over in the art. These models are from the original RTO3 release of 20 Metal Space Dwarves in 1987, designed by Michael and Alan Perry, and their ads pop up everywhere. I like that releases from this period are all named. They were accompanied by a squat heavy weapons release featuring this guy, Captain Kirk. After Rogue Trader's release and throughout 1988, Games Workshop went all in on squats. The original release was joined by a range of command models, the squat thud gun, now called a quad launcher, squat bikes and trikes, and a range of sculpts with poseable plastic arms, including Hearthguard, Living Ancestors, and a Warlord, all designed by the Perry Twins. They were also bolstered by the Iron Claw squats, designed by Bob Ollie. Iron Claw was the name for a range of sculpts that Bob Ollie made for Games Workshop around this time. This squat deluge continues into 1989 with exo squats, chaos squats, and a squat adventurers range, as well as one of the first Games Workshop plastic kits, the RTB09 Space Dwarves box. They also popped up in other mixed releases. The RTB3 Devastators box set in 88 had a squat mole mortar. The 1989 Adeptus Mechanicus release had a squat servitor and tech priest, and the 87 Mercenary set had Shorty and Iron Bont the squat, although both are quite early sculpts and noticeably smaller than the rest of the range. White Dwarf 111 in 1989 included a squat army list so you could finally use all these models, as well as most of the background and history for the squat homeworlds. The descendants of miners settling near the galactic core in the Dark Age of Technology, the squats emerged as a unique culture during the Age of Strife, which they called the Age of Isolation. They took advantage of their world's mineral wealth to trade with the Eldar and Orcs, before being inevitably betrayed by both, causing them to hold a grudge forever. Still firmly on the Dwarves in Space theme then. When they were rediscovered by the Imperium, they managed to keep their autonomy as a faction because of their unparalleled access to Dark Age technology, which means that while they have access to huge amounts of cool stuff, they aren't required to worship the Emperor or the Omnissiah. The Squat homeworlds are allies to the Imperium rather than a part of it. Squat societies are based on the Stronghold, and Strongholds join together into leagues for mutual defence. Their military forces are organised into Brotherhoods, but outside the structure of the Brotherhoods and the Strongholds exists the Engineers Guild. These wandering lodges of technicians with long hair and mirror shades ride between the Strongholds on bikes and trikes. Honestly, the weird decision to make squats into space bikers makes a lot more sense when you start googling images of trikes. This whole article is really comprehensive, it's kind of what we'd now call a codex. Pages of background, lots of art, rules for special equipment like exo armor, hit and run tactics for skidding your bikes around, and then the army list itself. The list has different options for Brotherhood or Engineers Guild forces. It also includes rules for Chaos Squats, which reference the massive rewards and attributes lists in the Realm of Chaos books. In brief, the army list includes a Warlord and their Hearthguard, who can take exo armor, the standard Combat Squad, who could swap their LAS guns for bolt guns, chainswords, or famously, all take heavy bolters. Guild weapon teams with mole mortars, thud guns, or tarantulas, they were crew served back then. Living ancestors, the rare squat psychers. And then the engineers guild units, like guild masters, guild weapon teams on trikes, and standard guild biker squads. Finally, the army could include imperial commissars or tech priests as advisors. After 1989, the 40k squat releases start to dry up. 
The Citadel catalogue pages for the next few years are mostly the same sculpts in different combinations. However, Epic Games Workshop's 6mm gaming system went through its first two editions during this period, and squats were added to the game in 1992 with the release of the Orc and Squat Warlord set. The background here is mostly a rehash of what we already know, until we get to the real stars of this release, the huge squat war machines they get instead of titans. Like land trains, multi-tracked monster vehicles towing powered, track cars of ore, supplies or living quarters, and that can be used as armoured battle stations. Or the Colossus, essentially a land battleship built around the brilliantly named Doomsday Cannon. All the regular squat units were present here too, alongside stuff like the Goliath Mega Cannon, the Iron Eagle Gyrocopter, and the Overlord Armoured Airship. Like much of their technology, this weird steampunk vibe would be later stolen by the Mechanicum. Back in 40k, the second edition box set was released in 1993, which included Codex Imperialis and Codex Army Lists, the get you by bestiarian army list for all the models currently in production. Codex Imperialis had a few pages of squat background, condensing the information from the White Dwarf article and adding a little more about the 700 leagues, and includes basic rules for squats of various levels, guild masters, and ancestor lords. The army list included all the units from the previous edition, separating the combat squad out into warrior, attack and thunderer squads, who could still all have heavy bolters. And that was where it ended. A few test models were sculpted for second edition, and they were really reminiscent of Fantasy Dwarves, but a codex never appeared and eventually the Rogue Trader models just stopped being produced. A reprint of the Ian Watson Inquisition War trilogy in the early 2000s mentioned that no further details on the book's one squat character could be found since the squat homeworlds had been eaten by Tyranids. And that was it. The squats were the first Games Workshop faction to be squatted. In True Games Workshop style, it was never really retconned or outright stated that they didn't exist anymore. There were survivors in the background just that they weren't going to be a playable army anymore. Games Workshop briefly tried reusing the Space Dwarf concept in Battlefleet Gothic. Tau fleets could take two Demiurg ships, described as stocky humanoid traders and asteroid miners. But apart from these two ships, nothing else was produced. In 2004, in a rare moment of candour with the fanbase at that time, Jervis Johnson made a long post on the Epic Armageddon forums to set the record straight. I've included the link to the full post below, but in essence he states that while other fantasy species ported into early 40k had developed their own identities, the studio in the 90s just couldn't really think of anything to do with squats other than make them fancy dwarves in space. In retrospect, including them in the second edition box was probably a mistake, and they should have been left as part of Rogue Trader. I'd recommend reading the whole thing, it's refreshingly honest. Of course, squats never really went away. In later versions of the rulebook, squats were still mentioned as a variant human species. The 2009 subscribers edition White Dwarf model is distinctly squatty. And after the infamous clock incident of 2018, Necromunda received the first of two squat hired guns. Grendel Grendelson and Ragnir Gunstein are the first new squat models that have been produced by Games Workshop since the late 80s. I find it really interesting that a faction that obviously had so much love when the game was released could become a dead end so quickly. But in this case, the fact that Games Workshop never really retcons anything was a boon. And I like that the squats are still out there, floating around in the various games of the 41st millennium, and occasionally in games set in an entirely different universe. Thanks for watching.